I don't really have much going on for me outside of medicine at the moment. That's sad. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. How do you define work-life balance and how do you do it? Work-life balance for me is what you do doing a road round is basically if you want to do medicine, guys, or if you guys are watching, you just need to... Okay, so work-life balance as a resident doctor. So, Eunice, if you could just start off by telling us a bit about, you know, what a day in your life looks like. Okay. As in, like, when I get out of bed or, like... <laughs> yeah, well, 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 when you get to the hospital. Okay, when you get yeah, to the hospital. Because obviously you wake up really early, then, then you quickly get ready, blah, 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 you rush out, and then, I mean, oh, that's my life as a student doctor, anyway. And you rush out and yeah. you get to the hospital at sort of 7 or 8 a.m. Yeah. Yeah, I guess yeah. I'm, um, I'm a registrar now, mm. which means I have a lot more responsibility than an intern. Mm. And because of that, I think I, I met the hospital a lot earlier than you know, the, the interns are. So I try to prioritize getting to the hospital at seven o'clock. Um, and the ward round then starts at eight o'clock. So actually your day should start at eight, but I'm usually there at seven, prepping the patients, looking through the notes, seeing what's, ha what's happened overnight um, and just getting my head around the patients. And at eight o'clock we go into handover and that is where all the night staff come to this big meeting and they tell you what's happened overnight anything that's worrying anyone who's passed away um, and they hand over those patients to the morning team and then at eight o'clock we go and round on this patient that's, and what this that, means that's when the med students show up by the way that's it, when the med students show up handover, I, either handover or rounding yeah, I, I actually love having med students around. Um, so they, you start the ward round and usually it, the ward round can be either led by your consultant who is what an American is attending, the mm. consultant, or it can be led by the registrar. Um, and what you do during a ward round is basically go through everyone who is under your team and doing an assessment of how they're doing that day and coming up with a management plan for them. So the ward round usually lasts for the whole morning. And if you're unfortunate, it will last for the whole day, mm. depending on the workload. Um, so ideally, it finishes around 12, go get your lunch. And then for the rest of the day, you are acting on that management plan that you have devised for that patient that day. So that would be things like ordering investigations, calling up specialties to get their advice, um, doing their medications and, you know, doing the paperwork and all of that to make things as smooth as possible for, for that patient while they're, they're um, in the hospital, I suppose. Sure. So that's kind of how a day looks like. Mm. And, and sort of what time do you usually finish? I mean, it, it really, I know it really depends on the day, but like, you know, on average and on busy days. Okay. Um, well, at the moment, because this is my first job as a registrar this week, I've been finishing around 5, 5.30. Mm. Yeah. And I think hopefully that will get better as I, I know, you know, as I'm more comfortable with with what I'm doing and sure. because t usually the jobs should finish by 4, 4.30. I spend the last hour sitting down and just making sure that everyone's looked after and all everything's been done for the patient before I go home. Sure, sure. And yeah, my first question is, I thought the interns have to get there at the same time as the registrar or residents. Uh, no? Maybe in surgery? I don't know. Okay, yeah. yeah. I think maybe in surgery. Maybe in surgery, that's an expectation. Just sure. because of the workload, you kind of just have to be there before the registrar mm. uh, just to prep the ward round and things like that. Um, but f sure. yeah, most of the registrars don't get there that early because they already know what they're doing, <laughs> you know, uh, whereas I'm there because I just want to sure. wrap my head around the patients. Sure, yeah. And, and, and yeah. I mean, you're in... 
general medicine or internal medicine yeah. registrar, right? So yeah. I guess the difference with surgical registrar is that after they finish rounding, they just they just go into theatre. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I guess in a way, your sort of medical management is the same as the theatre, effectively, right? Effectively, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's that's, pretty that's straightforward just to it. cut yeah. someone open, yeah. fix the problem and close them up. Yeah. But Not like, everyone's cup of tea, though. Like, some people prefer using these compared to these. Yeah, I mean, right. I, I, quite, I quite like being able to um, fix the problem if it's simple. Maybe I should interview a surgical registrar, surgical you resident should. doctor next time and see yeah. how that differs. Yeah. Okay, what would you say is something that brings you stress at work? Uh, an unwell patient and not knowing what's happening to that patient. Because, yeah, you're like those typical presentations, it's pretty easy to deal with even when they're unwell. But when they present in a way that you're not used to, that's when I get stressed. I'm like, oh, okay, am I doing the right thing for this patient? Why are they still unwell? And then calling my boss about it and then they're like, oh, no, I think you did the right thing, but you're still uneasy because you don't know if what you've done yeah. will, you know, will eventually lead them to being better or being worse. Yeah, does that make sense? True. So, so do you act and then consult your seniors or... I thought you were meant to consult your seniors before you act. Mm, I think if if something is urgent, then as a registrar, you should have the ability to deal with that with your clinical knowledge and experience. And then afterwards, you can then double check your plans with your boss and just to update them because the patient ultimately mm. is under the boss's name. Sure. So it is part of your duty to let your boss know that this patient is sick and this is what you've done for them. This is what you think. What do they think? Do they have other thoughts of what you should be doing? Yeah. Because sure, sure. you, you're not, as maybe as an inter, intern, you can consult your, your senior before you act. But in an unwell patient, you just need to act. And then sure. you double check later yep. on. Hmm. Would you say the work that an intern and a registrar or resident does is pretty similar, but in an intern, it's more like task execution, whereas as a registrar, it's more like more involved in decision making? Yeah, it's very different because my different, okay. before, before I left um, to travel, I just finished my internship. Hmm. So coming back to medicine, being a registrar, I, f I feel that I've been struggling to get into the role because my mindset is very much still task-based, efficiency. How do I get this patient out? How do I make this workflow really smooth and the paperwork all efficient? Whereas as a registrar, you don't do any of that. You should be thinking about the patient in front of you. What's going on? What's the management plan? It's not about... Yeah, it's not about efficiency. It's about the patient in front of you. Okay. Does that make sense? You're not doing as much of the paperwork when you're mm. in you're a registrar. Of course, like if if your if your juniors are struggling, you give them a hand with the paperwork. But as a registrar, your duty is to look after the patient and do those decision making. I, yeah, yeah very, I, I think I, they're very different skills. Yeah. No, I, I always want, because, you know, as a student, you just look at your seniors and you're like, yeah, you know, th someone's calling something, someone's calling someone else and they're, they're in theatre, you know, they're doing this, they're doing that, you know, you, you never have any idea what they're actually doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And being on the phone is actually pretty stressful because the, the phone, um, what being on the phone means that is that you're on call. Mm. So that phone is lots of different specialties, mostly GPs and mostly emergency departments trying to refer a patient to your department or that you're trying to give advice to someone over the phone while you're trying to look after your own patients. Yeah. Yeah, true. All right. And let's get right into the the mainstay of this second section then. So 
seems like you you have a very busy life so far after your first week, Eunice. How do you define work life balance and how do you do it? Yeah, I think I think work life balance is like a, a tricky one to define、mm. because I believe that like we all have different seasons of life.、Um, Just before you 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 go、yeah. ahead. The reason that I ask that is there's different people define work life balance differently, right? Like、mm. some people think work is just you know you're sat there doing work and life is like lying on the couch and completely chilling. Whereas for me, for example, work is obviously doing work and life is active relaxation. For example, like going to the gym or running my YouTube channel or something. But for some people, that's still work, right? That's why I'm I'm just wanting to know, you know. As a resident doctor, what's your definition of work-life balance? Yeah, yeah. really interesting because I think、um, I wanted when when I came back from from the traveling, I wanted to to make sure that when I started medicine, I still have time to do things outside of medicine, things like YouTube,、um, you know, things things like hanging out with friends and doing all those physical activities. Those are really important to me.、Hmm. But the reality is. After being in medicine and doing those hours, I literally get home, sit in front of my computer, and I just cannot keep my eyes open. And this is literally seven p.m. and I'm exhausted. I I hope that this is only the first week because you know of the big change and the learning curve, but the reality of of wanting to keep up all these other things outside of medicine, including physical activity and gymming and socializing. And YouTube is difficult. It's just it's too difficult. little time for too, it's just too many things for too little time, right? Sometimes, and too little energy. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I. That's the thing that I, I think is the worst part about medicine is that when you you spend so much of your mental energy, your physical energy, walking around the hospital, and like using a lot of brain power at work. When you come home, you don't have any of that left for the people who are most important to you, which is like your family, your partner, your friends, and your physical health, which is you know gymming and things.、Yeah. So I think it takes a huge toll on you, and because of that, work-life balance for me, I think, is having the energy and the time to be able to do things that are important for you. True.、And、That's so, my definition.、Mm, and do you? Do anything actively to make time for that, because obviously, being you know, you're working at least sixty hours a week, and so you have to actively make time for it, right? Like you don't have、yeah. the luxury to just get home and just chill and do whatever for for a while, and then you know, work on your YouTube or go to the gym or something. Yeah, 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 definitely. So what I I do is that every week I sit down and I plan. Plan what I want to do outside of doctoring、mm. per week. I I sit down at the start of the week, open my Google Calendar, and I start scheduling things to do. So、um, I make sure that I'm going to the gym、um, four times a week, plus doing yoga. So I try to schedule those sessions before I go to work. So I'll be you know I'll be at the gym at six o'clock. And then I go to work because the chances are, if you leave it for after to work, after you finish work, you're just not going to have the energy to do that. So I make sure I schedule those things in and do things ahead of time, plan ahead of time,、um, book into things that you can't say no to,、um, like gym classes and things like that. Yeah,、um, and putting in your annual leaves really early. Because、okay. the chances are, yeah, they're just a little wee tip tip for you for when you do start I work. Heard, I have heard that one before.、Yeah. Lots of my seniors talk about it to to final year medical students when they're stepping about to step up to become an intern. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because it's such a big hospital.、Um, if you don't put in your annual leaves early, it's it's based on it's a first come first serve sort of sort of. Uh, system, I guess. If you don't, if you don't put in early, then you might not get those leaves that you want. Like if you have a wedding that you need to go to, and you don't put your leave early on, you might not be able to attend that wedding. You know, and and it's just such a big deal 
to to plan early and make sure that everything is sorted for your whole year if you already have plans. Mm. And that that's the reality of medicine, right? Like some almost you're sacrificing your own life and well being in order to for for someone else. It's like yeah. an exchange, right? Yeah, I guess yeah. it's also like the mentality that you go into doing those things as well. It's True. it's just when you do medicine you're accepting of those hours that you're in your early 20s to your maybe early 40s that this time investment in the hospital is just something that you have to do. True. And if you want to do medicine guys, or if you guys are watching, you just need to be accepting that for those 20 years of your life, you can't choose your hours. There's not no, there's no choosing to only work 40 hours per week. Like that's not medicine. You can't, you can't do that. Like, I think that's something that I wish someone had told me before I do medicine, mm. that you can't choose to not do night shifts. You can't choose to not do weekends. You just have to do those things. Yeah. You just answered my next question. I was going to ask you, are there any aspects oh, that, that you wish you knew before becoming a resident or reg registrar or junior doctor or whatever you'd like to call it? Sometimes I feel like it takes time for that real medical spirit to like sink in, right? It, take, it takes until you become a consultant for, for that, for you to completely feel the medicine. Because like when you're an intern, especially, you're just acting on things, right? That, yeah. That's how I feel. I feel like consultants enjoy um, medicine way more than the junior staff. Oh, I, I, I agree. I agree, definitely. Especially for interns, it's all very task-based. You're mm. not actually treating the patient. You're doing these tasks so that... Oh, how do I say this? You're doing these tasks so that the process is a lot smoother for everyone else. You're a very important part of the team because you are the backbone that things are happening. You know, you're 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 doing those blood tests, you're doing those investigations, you're you're doing those ward round notes, discharge paper. If if the intern wasn't there, the patient would just never leave the hospital or never get better because those are they are the people acting on those little tasks to make it happen. Everyone's Whereas a where, cog everyone's a cog in the wheel, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah true yeah um just before we finish i'd like to come back to that question some aspects that you wish you knew before becoming a resident doctor apart from the work hour aspect that you mentioned are there anything else that you want to add um i just wanted to add that night shifts suck like <laughs> they're, really? they're terrible for they're terrible for your social life they're terrible for your sleep um, but yeah, I guess that's just part and parcel of that. I really? just wish someone would have told me yeah. in medicine, like before med school, that you're going to have to do these night shifts because I prioritize, I'm someone who prioritized sleep a lot sure. and like, yeah, well-being a lot. And that could have been a deal breaker for me, actually, if someone would have told me about the reality of night shifts. All right. I mean, haven't you watched, you know, medical dramas and, and knew that they do night shifts? No. No. I don't really watch medical dramas. I don't really watch the TV, Harry. Sure. No, yeah. neither. Yeah. All right. So, um, I mean, it's my fault for not researching about the job properly, but you just don't know what you don't know until you're you're actually doing the job. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I guess the other thing is that for those of the medical students that are watching this right now, I just want you to enjoy your time in medical school as much as you can do what you want to do because after you're in the hospital you don't get to choose your hours sure yeah very good advice i will be sure to keep that in mind eunice and then final question originally the question was where do you see yourself in 10 years i was actually wondering where do you see yourself in five years oh five years yeah or both, mm. five years and ten years. Okay, okay. Well, in five years, I think, I think I will be still trying to get onto the training program. I think I'll be sitting a lot of exams 
or preparing for exams for the physician exam and maybe having a family in five years how old am I now I'm 27 so I'll be like 32 or something so hopefully having a family then and I'm hoping that in five years time that YouTube is making a good chunk of passive income sure hopefully that would be really nice you know it would be really nice to to know that I have the option to cut down my hours in the future mm. Ooh, yeah, you're, you're, you're I haven't really have to, thought about five you're, years. You're gonna really. have to take you're gonna have to take your work life balance to another level in five years. You know, starting a family and running the YouTube thing like straight on and doing exams and doing your training and trying to get onto a training program. Yeah, yeah. yeah I I um, I don't know how my seniors do it because, like, I, I'll talk to I I was working with this registrar um two years ago and he. Was ha- he has a newborn baby and he was on call over the weekend. I was like, did you even sleep last night? And he said, I was probably only slept two hours, but he still had that 30 hour on call over the weekend. And it's just shocking. Is that a surgical but- registrar? No, it's medical registrar. Oh my, are you serious? Oh, go, okay, <laughs> sure. So like, yeah. I don't know how they do it, but... So I, I'm already struggling, but I hopefully, hopefully I sort of build some sort of resilience to be able to take on more responsibilities in different roles, I guess. Sure. How about 10 years? 10 years? Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully I'm in the, in the Durham program, hopefully. Sure. I don't really have much going on for me outside of medicine at the moment. That's sad. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Like, um... Family would be one of the biggest one, but sure. I'm accepting that a big part of me is going to be focused on medicine because that's just the season of life that I'm, I will be in mm. that time. You know, things may be different after 20 years. I might be able to start my own business, you know, as, as, a, as a dermatologist or even starting my own skin brand and those, those sort of things like that would be a different stage of life where I have more freedom to do what I want to do. Sure, yeah. And actually having the money to do it. Of course, yeah. Sometimes it's easier to just take it a step at a time and just focus on what we're doing now, right? Because things can change, you know, five, ten years. Exactly. It's it's a long time, yeah. Yeah, it is a long time. Who knows what's going to happen, you know, like... That's when when COVID happened. We we didn't we didn't expect that to make such a bu- huge impact to mm. to um on medical school for example. A lot of it went online. A lot of yeah. people the OSCEs got cancelled, and that's not happening anymore. And yeah. and we were shocked because we spent a whole year preparing for those OSCE big exams. But now that that's cancelled, we're very jealous. We're like, you guys didn't have to go through that. No, just just an example. I mean, we no, just no, don't no, know what will happen. Now, now they're being reinstated. So. Oh, are they? Yeah, okay. I, of okay. course. I I had to do them in third year. Oh, I had you to had do to them do last those, year. Right. Yeah, I had to do them two months ago. So you know, of course. Oh, yeah. they're, okay, I don't feel too bad now. Back. But in yeah. in Otago, I think they haven't been reinstated. Well, they should be, and and I guess that's why I'm biased. Otago is definitely the second best med school. In the country. Whoa! Oh, you're yeah. taking it far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a good um, discussion that brings us to the end of the podcast. Eunice, thank you so much for being on here. It's a pleasure. Thank you for. Um, I know that you just finished working a long day plus a post take day. So thank you so much for taking your time to come on. And um, if any of you, I'm sure all of you, uh, watching this enjoy this episode please leave a comment below and let me know and um if there's any other topics that you'd like to hear be sure to comment below and also don't forget to like and subscribe and do all that good stuff and um are there any final words that you want to add Eunice? not really not just really. uh lift your lives guys yeah and otherwise stay fit stay strong stay positive and i'll see you next time Cool. Woo!